Oh, what is going on YouTube? One and only x frame here. As you can see, I'm not on any meadow. So last week, I had to take my bike in to get its yearly service, annual service, and apparently I wore the front tires, the wear bars on this spot down. So I guess I was actually riding the bike as it was intended. <laughs> and I thought I replaced both, but apparently I only replaced the rear the last time I was here. So today, what is service like on a Ducati Superbike like this one? There's a lot of, I don't say misinformation, but there's a lot of stereotypes that aren't quite right. The annual service light is on. Unfortunately, um, it's because their computer to reset it's down and Ducati tech support isn't uh, helping out very much. Oh God, it is hot. Oh gosh, it feels good too. So yeah, this vlog uh, kind of go over a little bit of the service. Be warned, it is not for the faint of heart. Uh, but it isn't quite as uh, terrible as some might think. So, this came in for a yearly service and a front tire. Tires are going to be what they're going to be. I put Diablo Super Corsa's the V3s I think these are now. Uh, I just love them. They're OEM. It's what comes with the bike. It's just my preference. Uh, but annual service because uh, I'm at 5,000 miles as well. Uh, fluids, chain, uh, air filters. Really basic shit, you know. Uh, but we're looking at about 300, maybe a little bit more, depending on some of your places. Oh, the brakes feel good. So that's general maintenance, oil changes. And again, I take it to certified places because when you have a Ducati and, and any bike that's kind of under warranty, when you take them to places that aren't certified to work on the bike, that manufacturer oh god it's not good that manufacturer will void your warranty uh, obviously that's not a good thing because parts for this bike are expensive the big service for this is at 15,000 miles a lot of people think that the valves for these newer bikes Need to be adjusted like every like 7,500 or 6,000 miles or something like that, and that's just simply not true. And that service, um, it's 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 not cheap. It's definitely well over a grand to do because the bike gets completely stripped down. Uh, the good news though is with the V4s they're a little cheaper because they're not quite as labor intensive as the 11 and 1299s are because to do that service for the 11 1299 the entire bike is stripped down because of the way the framing is with the engine as the main structure point to all the other components of the bike so everything has to be stripped off the motor and you're literally left with that on a stand so it's there's definitely a lot to that service. Ah, come on. So that's one thing. You, you, when you buy these bikes, you kind of have to understand that the parts are going to be more expensive. They're also going to be a little harder to come by. I had an 1199S and the exhaust valve was having issues, the module was having issues. And because of that, I was having, I get on the gas and then it would just blah, just die because the exhaust valve wasn't actually opening and kill your power and all that good stuff. Well, to get that module, it had to come from Italy. So it ended up taking like two months to get. So parts are something else you have to kind of understand when maintaining these vehicle or this bike is that they're, they're going to take some time to get because of they're being overseas and especially now with this coronavirus stuff it's shut down a lot and the manpower has gone down so it's the delay the lead times are even longer now so when you when you go to get 
a bike like this, you have to factor in that one, it's a $40,000 bike. So there's that, there's insurance on a $40,000, 200 horsepower bike. You know, there's the maintenance side of it alone turns a lot of people away and it's understandable. Again, if you can afford the bike, you should be able to afford the maintenance on them. That's why, you know, a lot of people like the cheaper Hondas, granted the new, the new CPRR R1000 SBRR or whatever the fuck you call it uh, is, I think it's 29 grand. That bike is, that bike is actually expensive. <laughs> the thing with Italian bikes is they are very, what is this guy doing? What the fuck are we doing here? Okay. I don't think this giant ass truck knows where the fuck is going. <laughs> Things you don't see going downtown. Big ass truck and trailers on a regular basis. Ah, oh, this bike feels good right now. She's alive. Again, with these bikes, you don't want to waste a lot of time between your services. I know they're expensive and they, they kind of hurt the wallet but when they're as high performance as this bike is uh italian brands are notoriously finicky when they're like that you have to stay on top of them otherwise if you let them go they are going to be so expensive in the long run because you're going to have to maintain something that's way out of spec way way worn down you're gonna end up spending a lot more oh crap this bike's good <laughs> so that's my quick little video i know it's not the best uh most information to it but i get a little ideas a normal oil change, you're looking at over 300 bucks. You just saw how much they are. You have to bleed. I have to bleed the brake and the clutch. Damn near every two and a half, three weeks. Because they lose their feel. and you, you, They just need to be bled. <laughs> so, these bikes require maintenance. And granted, like I said, the bleeding of the clutch and brake, you can do that yourself. It's not very hard. It's pretty straightforward. But the major stuff, you gotta take it to somewhere. I, I highly recommend doing that. Otherwise, if you have a warranty or avoid it, and then you're gonna be looking at parts to replace. And because they're not under warranty anymore, you're gonna be out hundreds of thousands of dollars. So with these bikes, you gotta take care of these. I'll stay on top of them. It does it does it hurt the pocketbook a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> you figure the biggest payment is once you buy them, but over time it's the maintenance and everything else. So, buyer, understand what you're getting into. It's a long commitment. They're amazing machines. They feel like nothing else. They just, they just have a personality all their own. And I, I love them. I absolutely love them. Since I've been fortunate enough to be able to afford them, uh, I hope that you guys out there get a chance to experience one, if you can. If you have a friend that has them, that trusts you enough, or a shop that will allow you to demo one, because they have a demo. Like, on any moto has a V4S to demo. Um, if you're serious about buying certain bikes to let you demo them, do it. People are just being terrible drivers. You know, they're great bikes. So with that, y'all have a good one. I'm gonna keep on cruising here to get home because it is. Let's see, what's the temperature? Come on, 104. It's fucking hot. And again, I wear full gear, so here we are. Uh, y'all have a good one. I hope to get some more videos out to you. Hope you're all being safe and 
with that. Bye-bye.